Welcome back everyone to the second episode of Victorians Exposed. Today I'm going to be talking about anorexia, one of the most prominent mental illnesses in young girls today in the Western world. According to statistics, 2.7% of teens aged 13 to 18 will suffer from an eating disorder, and of the people who do suffer from an eating disorder, over 50% of these also meet the criteria for depression. Eating disorders are generally associated with women, but it is important to remember that 10 to 15% of anorexia cases are made up of men. But what can't be denied is that eating disorders are a widespread medical problem and deeply rooted in culture's perceptions of beauty. But when you ask, most people tend to think that anorexia became a medically diagnosable disease in the 20th century. But the reality goes back a little bit further to 1873, when English doctor William Gull tried to make anorexia noversa a medically recognised mental illness. And when you think about it, it's not surprising that anorexia originated in this period, a period when Victorian femininity equated to a similar need for self-control and hatred of all appetites, sexual or otherwise. The word anorexia did exist at this point, but it merely meant a lack of appetite. Anorexia noversa recognised the starvation of oneself on a quest for thinness. And it is worth noting that male cases of anorexia were recorded in the 1870s. In fact, William Gull originally wanted to call the disease anorexia hysterica, but was reluctant to do so because of the fact that it could also be found in men. But what this shows us is that even in the 1800s, anorexia was regarded as a women's disease. And most doctors were reluctant to even recognise it as a separate disease from hysteria. And because of this, anorexia and hysteria often had similar forms of treatment. The most common treatment for anorexia was the rest cure, in which women would be confined to their bed for extended periods of time and force fed a diet intended to quickly add fat to the body. The success of this treatment is questionable, especially given the immense pressure that Victorian women were under to maintain a slim and delicate figure. There were two main reasons behind the self-starvation of young women in this period. The first of which was young women trying to recreate the images of slim, bird-like women that would appear in Victorian fashion. The second reason is that fat and thicker waists were generally associated with sexual appetites, masculinity, and most of all, the working class. Excess fat came to represent a lack of discipline, and if the body could be undisciplined, then the mind and the voice could be as well. By starving themselves, these women gained a sense of self-control over their own bodies that may have otherwise been impossible in Victorian society. But it wouldn't be right to talk about anorexia without talking about the corset, which some historians have named as the ultimate symbol of female bodily repression in the 19th century. When you look at pictures of fashionable Victorian women, you'll notice that they aren't gaunt or overly thin. In fact, a plumpness in the breasts, hips and arms was prized as very desirable, but their most important asset was their slender waist. One fashion magazine even wrote in 1876 that fashion was only inflexible on one point women had to be slender, and that was where the corset came in. Women were able to achieve the look of plumper bodies with a slender waist through the use of corset. One 19th century commentator estimated that most women would not have a waist that was above 24 inches in size. And through tight lacing, women would often achieve waists as small as 17 inches. Just as supermodels today do not accurately reflect everyday women, the tiny waists of Victorian high fashion were not an everyday occurrence, although many women would use tight lacing for special occasions. There were many attempts by medical men to warn against tight lacing due to the damage that it did to a woman's internal organs. But as 19th century writer Eliza Farrah eloquently put it, so long as gentlemen admire small waists and prize those figures the most, it is vain to tell young ladies that the practice is destructive of health and there is no real beauty found in the small dimensions at which they are aiming. Anorexia was a way for women to gain self-control over their own bodies, and at the same time find self-worth in attempting to recreate the unrealistic images of female beauty that are enforced onto culture. There are many striking similarities between Victorian anorexia and anorexia today, and it is worth reflecting on why so little has changed when the end result is millions of young girls feeling worthless, simply because they don't think they're thin enough. Thanks for watching. If you didn't watch the first episode of Victorians Exposed, you can just click here. And if you want to keep up to date with all of the videos on this channel, just click subscribe. We'll see you next time.